Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Adil Asif and I am a Beta Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. Uh, I am also I am also management team lead at Microsoft Learn Community Karachi. Uh, today we are, uh, as you all know that we are having a series on tech talks, and today we have a series on uh, cyber security, and we have with us uh, Saad Aslam. Saad Aslam is an expert in. I won't be wrong if I would say that Saad Aslam is an expert in cyber security. He has done a lot of work in the. He has done a lot of sessions in cyber security, and we have also learned a lot from his sessions. So we bring this session to you all so that you can also learn from him. So I would pass over to Saad. Okay, uh, am I audible? Ali? Yes, you are audible. Okay, so let me first uh, share my screen. Uh, kindly confirm when it is visible. It is visible. OK, so let's get started. So uh, thank you, Adil, for the wonderful introduction. So uh, as we all know that today we are going to discuss on uh, cyber security and uh, today's title is Cyber Talk with Cyber Boy. So a brief introduction about myself. So I am with I have been doing the community work from the past couple of years. So first I started with technology and I'm also a developer student club lead at GC University Lahore. Uh, also, like I started my journey with Microsoft as a Microsoft student partner. Uh, then we were promoted as a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. And I, I was also recognized as a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and in run, running communities in uh, my city. Other than that, uh, I have been a part of other communities like .NET Foundation, Deep Learning AI, and uh, I write technical articles on cybersecurity at C Sharp Code. So uh, let's get started with our today's agenda. So first we are going to discuss about social engineering. So what is social engineering? Then uh, shoulder surfing, phishing attack, phone scams, ransomware attacks, uh, device security, and at the last we have a fun session. So, uh, so uh, Adil, is it visible? All right. Uh, yes, sir, that's visible. OK, so in the session, if uh, there's some sort of uh, uh, disturbance or anything, so Adil, please inform me about that. Sure, I'll inform you. OK, so uh, let's get started. So to, first, we are going to discuss some misconception we have about cyber attackers. So uh, first misconception is like cyber attackers only use advanced hacking tools and technology to break into people's computer accounts and mobile devices. So first of all, when we think of cyber attackers, uh, like we think that they only use some sort of advanced tools uh, to hack into our systems, our devices. So that's a misconception about that. So uh, like we are going to discuss it in our further uh, slides. So unfortunately, uh, cyber attackers have learned that one of the easiest ways uh, to steal your information or hack your computer is by simply talking to and misleading you. So as we just uh, discussed, like they don't uh, not only use advanced hacking tools, like they can attack or uh, steal your information just by talking to you uh, or by emotionally uh, misguiding you. So they don't need any sort of uh, tools for that purpose. So. Let's discuss what is social engineering. So as we have discussed, like uh, cyber attackers not only use uh, uh, advanced hacking tools, so how they did do it? So uh, the term in cyber security, we call it as social engineering. So social engineering is a psychological attack where an attacker tricks you into doing something you should not do. So it's a type of some sort of psychological attack, uh, like it, the attacker emotionally uh, try to uh, misguide you and do something with you that you want uh, do not want to do. So cyber attackers can easily pretend to be anything or anyone they want and target millions of people around the world, including you. So what's the meaning of this? Uh, like as we know in this digital era, uh, in this uh, COVID situation, we are now 
the most digitally connected than ever like uh, as you are watching this uh, session online and there are multiple sessions going uh, online and we are now connected the most digital so as uh, we have some uh, positive aspects of it <clears throat> but the cyber attackers the, <clears throat> the cyber attackers are also using these uh, techniques to have a negative aspect of it so what is social engineering so it's uh, deceiving someone uh, either in person over the phone or using a computer so cyber attacker can use any sort of medium uh, like they can do in person they or they can call you over the phone or use some sort of uh, computer or device to misguide you so in at the right side there is a figure of social engineering that says the clever manipulation of the natural human tendency to trust so think uh, like if uh, i said like if uh, you met a stranger and you ask him to share his content uh, credentials with you so what he going to say just think about it so he is not going to share his credentials because he doesn't trust you uh, like he ha don't have any sort of trust in you but if you uh, like first establish some sort of relationship or some uh, connections with him and establish a trust so after that establishing a trust so if uh, you are some sort of uh, like his accounts or some sort of thing so he may going to share that thing so trust is a thing that cyber attackers uh, make use of and attack and some sort of misguide you in that purpose so what the, the purpose of cyber attacker is to breach the security so in this figure uh, like is uh, social engineering tactics so we have discussed so, uh, social engineering so another word we have uh, seen is tactics so what is tactics so uh, tactics is just like handling the situation in a uh, like clever way like if you have a situation uh, like if someone uh, some going to ask you a question and you are going if you are uh, handling the situation in the clever way so it is called tactics so after social engineering tactics means uh, why social engineering so hacking a computer is much easier than hacking a business so uh, suppose if uh, like attacker has to attack some company so uh, he has to do like many, many security uh, checks and he has to go to all the security checks but if he is going to uh, like establish a connection with some internal employee of the company so he can have a backdrop that company which means that he can easily uh, like uh, harm the company through the internal employee connection so it's much easier to establish a connection uh, establish a connection with a uh, employee or uh, some person either uh, like attacking some sort of company so what why is this so so here you can see that it is because of laziness ignorance haste fear attitude trust so these are the things that count in social engineering why the people fall into that uh, attack so attackers prey on your human weaknesses so like if you are if you are lazy and uh, we have some trust issues or uh, carelessness empathy ego greed so there are the some uh, like features that attack cyber attack are going to uh, have when they are going to attack on you so let's uh, discuss a scenario uh, on social engineering so here is a scenario on customer support company so uh, like most of you or sometimes uh, if you have uh, experienced something like uh, you receive a call or a, or an email uh, like they are stating that they are from a customer su support company and they say that you uh, like uh, the some so uh, some software in your laptop or device or some application needs to be updated and we are calling from the customer support and they said they that application needs to be updated urgently so they share a link or some sort of uh, like uh, link they going to share with you so you have to click and when you click then uh, they are going to take use of your information from that link so they are not uh, like uh, authentic uh, customer support uh, like they are cyber attackers so some uh, times you have we have to figure out like the call we receive or the email we have received is from an authentic one 
so uh, in further slides we are going to discuss what are the authentic resources uh, and what are, uh, and which resources are not authentic so uh, you have to like uh, keep uh, aware of these sort of scenarios the second scenario uh, there is a attack called ceo fraud so uh, like this uh, sort of attack is uh, you can say is a sort of social engineering attack uh, where uh, attacker pretends to be your boss or some uh, like higher management of your company or uh, in your organization and uh, they pretend to be some your some like your boss and they order or demand you to do some sort of actions urgently uh, like they mostly attack the finance guys uh, like they can email to uh, to make some sort of payments urgently so this is called a ceo fraud so <clears throat> beware of these sort of attacks and we are going to discuss how we are going to distinguish be between what are the authentic ones and which uh, like uh, scenarios are not so uh, in this figure you can see a woman uh, saying that you are hard so uh, this is using uh, this is using your emotions like uh, when you are not getting hired and you are doing job hunting so if some attackers uh, like checks that you are uh, doing job hunting so they take over your emotions and try to sad awaaz break ho gayi uh am i audible yeah, yes you are audible now okay so uh can you repeat the last slide because uh you want audible yeah, this one yes yes from here okay so uh if uh, like we are discussing about like this in this figure uh, you can see a woman who is uh, saying that you are hard so basically in uh, the it is using your emotional like if you are doing some sort of job hunting and you are uh, like uh, looking for jobs so if an attacker checks that you are looking for job they then they take over your emotion and make use of your weakness and uh, like do try to impersonate you to do some sort of actions you do not want to do so they are using your emotions and psychologically they are uh, controlling you so uh, these are the two scenarios we discuss and in further slides we are going to distinguish which uh, scenarios are the authentic ones and which are not so uh, the most common we have discussed is uh, like uh, in this picture you can see have you been poked yet so facebook add me as a so uh, like uh, the most common way like if uh, someone wants to know your social life and what you are doing and they want to take uh, like your internal life uh, what you are going what you are doing in your internal life so this index example it is showing that cyber attacker can uh, be uh, try to be your friend like uh, they if you add someone unknown to uh, as a friend and they try, uh, they try to see all of your social life like what you are doing what you are uh what in which company you are and what's your uh, financial status so uh, like if you are added as a friend uh, so cyber attackers can uh, view or watch all these sort of things and after like uh, com doing uh, complete uh, information they can uh, make use of this and can uh, do some sort of attacks on you so here you can see uh, if you receive an email like uh, this is the most common like if you receive an email of greeting cards uh, or announcements of lottery winning winnings like if you receive an email like if yeah you have uh, won a lottery so click on this link and if you uh, click you will receive your lottery so basically there's not a lottery there's a malicious link they have attached in your email so or breaking news alerts like uh, they can be any news alerts like uh, your uh, 
laptop or your, your software needs to be updated urgently and you have to click on this link to get your system updated. So the, any sort of breaking news alerts. So in, in all of these examples, uh, the attacker is relying on you to make the wrong choices. So uh, like if you have received any email from an unknown source, so the attacker can't, uh, can't do anything up till uh, you have uh, clicked on uh, on that link or have done some wrong ch choice. So in all these scenarios, you have to make the choice if you have to open that link or not. So uh, like shoulder surfing. So uh, in all these, uh, like mostly of the slides, we are going to discuss about your data uh, security and information security. So in shoulder surfing, uh, like here you can see in both of the first picture, like a person is trying to spy on the other person or try to sneak on uh, his in laptop. So he is uh, generally uh, trying to read the information the other person is doing on the laptop. And in the other picture, it's clearly visible uh, that the other person is writing down all the things they, the other person is doing on the laptop. So it is called some sort of shoulder surfing like they are uh, doing uh, all sort of uh, taking all sort of, sort of information from your back or uh, just uh, by in there. So it is a sort of in-person social engineering. So uh, I, here I have a solution for you in the next slide. Uh, if you have to adapt the solution or just uh, there's another solution that I'm going to discuss. So uh, are you ready to see the solution? Okay, let's see the solution. So uh, the solution for this shoulder surfing is this. So uh, either uh, you have to uh, like uh, keep your information secure like this, or you, uh, the other solution is that you can, if you have, uh, if you are doing any some sort of sensitive information or writing some sort of uh, sensitive information. So please uh, try to, uh, try to be in uh, environment that when there is no sensitive people or other people that you not know. So uh, do not write uh, or do any sort of uh, sensitive information in open areas like, or if you have, otherwise you have to adapt that solution. So uh, Adil, is it visible all right? Yes, Adil is visible. Okay, uh, so till now we have discussed like some uh, scenarios and what is social engineering and what uh, kind of uh, cyber attackers uh, use features to attack or do psychological attacks. So the most common uh, thing uh, the attackers use is phishing attack. It's not the phishing like uh, phishing, it's an uh, attack called phishing. It's P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. So uh, phishing reference that uses email or messaging service like uh, on social media sites that trick or fools you into taking an action such as clicking on a link or opening an attachment. So uh, we have discussed earlier in the slides like uh, it is a sort of attack that you receive an email from an unknown source and you click on that link and after clicking that uh, it takes you to a malicious site and when you enter or click on something, then uh, your information or your credentials are in, uh, you can say in danger. So uh, by falling victim to such an attack, you risk uh, having your highly sensitive information stolen or your computer infected. So there can be, uh, the, there can be two results of this, either your information like credentials or sensitive information from your system uh, going to be hacked or otherwise uh, you uh, click on that link and uh, some malicious software will going to install in your computer. So there are some sort of malwares we can say, uh, like when you click on that link, uh, there is an executable file and it executes and it installs in your computer. So it installs a malware into it. So attackers work hard to make phishing emails convincing. So in, other, in next slide, we are going to uh, have a complete overview of what uh, an authentic email is and what a cyber attacker email is. So uh, the slide is coming up. So before that, uh, we are going to see a video. Uh, Adil, can you please confirm 
कैन यू इज इट ऑडिबल ओके सो ओके सो हेयर इज अडियो ऑन फिशिंग अटैक सो लेट्स फर्स्ट प्लेट Oh man, my gaming account has been suspended. Huh? What? I just got an email that says it's suspended because of payment problems. They want me to fill out a ticket. Hmm. That looks like a fake phishing email to me. They've been going around. A what? A phishing email. You know when people send you fake emails to try and get you to click on links that download malware or computer viruses? How can you tell? Well, just hover over the link and look at the bottom left for the full URL. Doesn't look like your gaming company. I just delete it. Oh, close one. I knew I paid that bill. Okay, so in this uh, video, uh, we have just seen an animation uh, where they are displaying like uh, you receive an email, and it's convincing. Like right? they are saying that you have to click on this link, and after clicking, uh, your like you your game account will be restored. So it uh, it is convincing, but it's a cyber attacker email. So when you click on it, it will take your malicious site. So uh. they said that you have to hover over the link and we, when you hover over you will see that you will see the complete url of that link so from that you can uh, detect that it is a malicious link so uh, be aware of these sort of emails so that's the important part of this uh, phishing attack so how to spot a phishing email so there's the thing that you are going to use to distinguish between uh, what a uh, uh, authentic email is and what a phishing email is so here is an email of a cyber attacker so here you can see in the subject uh, there is written as urgent email so whenever an attacker send you a uh, email there may there will be a some sort of urgency like they want to do uh, the uh, action urgently so that uh, you can fall into it and do some sort of wrong choice so in the uh, in the first line here you can see receive so there will be bad uh, bad grammar and spelling mistakes so uh like it uh, we strongly advise so th- it comes uh, that advice it a d v i s e so it's a, a bad grammar and uh, you can see that it and the third line address immediately so there is also an urgency in that line so you can see that in the subject and in the third line there is some uh, some sort of urgency and in the first two lines there are bad grammar and spelling mistakes so in the uh, fourth line we have suspicious url so uh, like when you hover over that link you will see that in in the animation we have seen that when you hover over there is a malicious link so whenever you receive a uh, email and there is a link try to hover over and you will see the complete link whether it is authentic or not and uh, an improper use of copyright so these are the f- साथ यू आंट ऑडिबल ओके एम आई ऑडिबल आदिल यस यू आर ऑडिबल नाउ ओके सो देर इज अनदर थिंग यू हैव टू एड इन दैट लाइक वन एवर एन ऑथेंटिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और यूजर सेंड यू एन ई मेल 
they will uh, you can see that the domain is authentic like if you receive a mic uh, email from microsoft so it will be abc at microsoft.com or uh, if you receive an email from student ambassador so it will be abc at studentambassador.com or google.com so but whenever uh, mostly cyber attackers use uh, like public uh, domains like they will use gmail or other uh, emails because it's not easy to track or uh, some sort of that thing so whenever uh, you yeah, receive a uh, email like this uh, like gmail or other thing and and there are some sort of like these are the five things you have to distinguish uh, between authentic one and the email which is not authentic so what's the anatomy of phishing so cyber criminals uh, the first uh, camouflage their bait like in uh, we can say that uh, they have to first choose on which he have to do the attack the person you, you can say or first uh, the cyber criminal uh, tries to be look legit legitimate like he first tries to establish a connection or relationship and after est uh, establishing your trust uh, he is going to the to the attack so hoping to convince or threat uh, threaten targets or the result of this is to reveal login and password information or download some sort of malware so uh, we have uh, seen the email attachment uh, like phishing attack uh, we have seen what uh, which uh, emails are authentic or not and uh, in email uh, there sometimes are email attachments so you have to make sure never open executable attachments with file extensions such as .exe.com or .pif so uh, never open those extensions like uh, exe Ex uh, exe extension is for a, an executable file uh, means you click on this uh, when you click it will execute and it will uh, download or install some sort of malware so never open uh, executable file uh, unless it it is the email is verified from uh, authentic user and never open attachments up with the file extension you do not recognize uh, basically uh, like if you, uh, there's an extension of word like dot word dot pdf if these are recognized by you uh, like do, you can open them easily but if there is a, a file called dot fol dot mob uh, you, these are the extensions you do not recognize so do not open them or unless uh, if you uh, have we uh, want to open so you can search them on google or uh, browser like if these extensions really exist so if uh, you don't find any sort of uh, ex these extensions so do not open these attachments so hackers often try to trick you by putting executable in, uh, attachments inside of a zip file so it can also like it can also be in, included in a zip file uh, so if, yes we have discussed that you have to not have to open any executable files so open attachments only from sources you trust even if the file looks harmless so until now uh, we have discussed about social engineering and what are the things cyber attackers use and uh, after that we have discussed a phishing attack and what emails are authentic and which emails are not so after that uh, we are going to discuss the phone scam uh, so adil uh, is it all clear till now yes sir that's all clear okay great so as we have discussed uh, like email in email the cyber uh, attack is going to uh, some they are going to do some sort of attack in the sort of an email uh, but uh, in phone scams you can see that the in this figure the it is displaying that the attacker is trying to steal your information using your phone or your uh, money or any sort of uh, information from you so why phone scams First, unlike email, there are fewer security technologies that monitor phone calls and detect and stop an attack. So, unlike email, uh, like uh, when you received an email, we have discussed in the previous slide that you can identify uh, which uh, email is authentic or not using the five things we have discussed. But in phone call, you can't uh, like you can uh, you can't detect that whether it is a authentic email or authentic phone call or not. So 
you can't detect, but there are fewer security technologies uh, like an email. And second, it is much easier for bad guys to convey emotion over the phone, which makes it more likely that they can trick their victims. So uh, like email, uh, they can't predict their emotions. Like, but in phone, if they try to be polite and gentle with you, and they say like, uh, sir and madam, uh, you uh, you can do this task and if they are doing some sort of polite uh, talk with you so they are uh, just uh, using your psychological emotions to attack on you so the bad guys can use that emotions so how do phone call attacks work so uh, first the caller pretends that they are from a government tax department uh, they explain that if you don't pay your taxes right away, you will go to jail. So there's a scenario like uh, you receive a call and they say that you haven't uh, paid your taxes. So if uh, but if you haven't paid your taxes and you receive a call from a bad guy like this, uh, so you do the actions in urgently, uh, the attacker says. So how can an attacker know that uh, you haven't uh, paid your bills? So we have discussed in social engineering that they will uh, track all your social life and social tasks you do, what you have done and what you have not done. So after doing or tracking those uh, your social life, they are going to attack like email uh, phishing attacks or phone scams like this. So uh, this is a scam. Uh, all official uh, tax notifications are sent by regular mail. So uh, whenever an organization has to do some task, they, the official way or we follow like we have to do an email rather than calling the person directly. So that's an official way of uh, doing task. So in this uh, figure, uh, you can clearly see that uh, the attacker is uh, try to uh, steal the money from the old lady using the phone and the lady is just uh, busy and it's, uh, she doesn't know what is going on. So an attacker uses the phone and tries to convey emotions and try to steal your information or your money. So what are the protective measures we have to take? So any time anyone calls you and creates a tremendous sense of urgency, alarming you to do something be extremely suspicious. You can stop and say no at any time. So uh, like if you receive a call, like uh, you, re uh, you receive a call and they try to do the task urgently or you they say yet, yet uh, you have to do that ask at the right at the right moment. So it's up to you uh, like in social engineering, you have to uh, stop and decide whether it is a right call or not and you have the power to say no. So if you say no and uh, don't do the actions, the, the attacker can't do anything. So it's up to you to make the right choice. Uh, if you believe a phone call is an attack, simply hang up. If you want to confirm if the phone call was legitimate, go to the organization's website and get the customer support phone number and call them directly yourself. So uh, like if you receive a uh, call from like any you can say software house uh, or any ABC software house. So uh, so they say like uh, you are selected uh, by the software house. Just share your credentials with us uh, so that we can create your account. So if you uh, believe that it is some sort of attack, so you just hang up, go to the ABC software house website, and in the website you can uh, clearly see their contact details like their phone number and their email. So verify if the phone call match, uh, phone number matches with the phone you, phone call you receive. So if it doesn't, so just say no. Okay, so all uh, clear up till now, Adil? Yes, sir. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, things we have discussed in social engineering, like first uh, in social engineering, then phishing, and then uh, we have discussed about uh, uh, phone scams. So the, the thing we are going to discuss is ransomware. So it is a sort of... Uh, 
Okay, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay, so uh, like this is the most common attack in our society. Like uh, mostly students or uh, or professionals from the industry uh, generally uh, contacts me that their files have been encrypted uh, or they have been infected with, with this ransomware. So uh, this there are different sorts of ransomware. And the thing they are going to infect your computer. So let's discuss about what is uh, ransomware is. So a ransomware infects your computer, encrypts certain files on your entire hard drive. You are then logged out of the whole system or cannot access your important files such as your documents and or photos. So uh, from the start of the session, we are going in a sequence. Like uh, uh, let's suppose an attacker. Uh, do social engineering. Uh, they uh, track all your social info, uh, social life, what you are doing, and after the, uh, that, they uh, collect your information like email or phone number. Then they uh, send you the, an email that includes a suspicious link or an attachment. And after that, uh, you click on that attachment. Uh, it contains that executable file. Uh, so when you click on the executable file, it executes, and when you execute, it contains a malicious uh, malware that's called a ransomware. So up till now, we have uh, completed all the scenarios, and now uh, let's suppose your computer is infected by the ransomware. So let's move on. So after executing, uh, the, your files are going to be encrypted by the virus, uh, sorry, malware. So the malware then informs that you, uh, the only way you can decrypt your files and recover your system is to pay the cyber criminal a ransom. So as uh, it's clearly uh, you can see from the name that it is composed of two words, like it's from ransom and, and where. So ransom uh, and where from malware. So when your files and important files like your uh, uh, important files and uh, files in, are encrypted and uh, the only you you will receive a message displaying like like your files are encrypted by the malware and only way to decrypt those files is to pay the uh, cyber attacker uh, some sort of ransom they demands so uh, in this video you can see like you are bounded when you are attacked by ransomware uh, it means that you can't do anything if your files are infected the only way uh, is to pay the ransom, and it is not 100% guaranteed that the cyber criminal is going to decrypt your files, or uh, the, or it uh, uh, the cyber criminal can make use of it and uh, you and demand some other ransom for uh, making your files in decrypted. So let's see a video on it. Uh, Adil, kindly confirm the it is audible. Yes, all this part. Thank you. 
Okay. So in this video, uh, you, it is they are displaying that uh, when your files are attacked by uh, ransomware, the things we have to make is uh, security measures. So the you can make use of security measures to uh, to like to avoid these sort of attacks. So the security measures we are going to discuss. So how do I protect myself from ransomware? So these are the security measures we have seen in the video and also we are going to discuss. Uh, like uh, the first step in uh, the security is to have some sort of cyber security measures in your system. So if you are a regular user or a student, so the security measure you can take is uh, installing some uh, good uh, antivirus program in your uh, laptop or your system or uh, in Windows 10 there is in a, already a Windows threat inst installed in your laptop so you can make use of that. So if you are an industry guy, uh, so the organization make use of, uh, tries to install all of the cybersecurity measures like advanced uh, uh, antiviruses or uh, firewalls and they do all of the cyber security stuff. So uh, the cyber security basically is the first training in uh, whenever you enter in your industry. So uh, whether you are a, a mobile uh, developer, a web developer or any Uh, Saad, you are stuck. Uh, Adil, am I audible? Yes, now you are audible. Okay, I had some like connection. There was a connection issue. So whenever you go to the industry, the first uh, training they do is of cyber security awareness program. So uh, this is the most fundamental thing uh, you have to uh, train or you have to learn uh, whenever you are entering in your industry. So these are the things we have in the discuss in the previous slides and we are discussing now. These are the most fundamental things you have to learn. So uh, in ransomware, uh, the most, uh, the most, I prefer you to is make backup of backups of your data. So if you have any important data, uh, imp uh, then upload them on the cloud. You have OneDrive, you have Google Drive, so you have clouds available. So upload your imp important information in uh, clouds, or if you have an external drive, so you can uh, backup your data in that. So uh, I prefer you to make backups of of your important information on. Uh, you can say regular basis. This is the most important thing I prefer you to do. Another thing you can do is uh, multi-factor authentication. Like if you have any device, you can uh, when you do multi-factor, uh, you uh, you can have a double security of your uh, device. Like if you are adding your password and a mobile security code in that also, so your device is going to be multi-factor secured. So uh, in the sequence, we have a mobile security uh, like we have discussed till now the ransomware and now we are going to uh, do the mobile security. So because uh, we are almost all of us are using, uh, using mobile devices. So the security of uh, that thing also comes in the sec cyber security awareness. So let's discuss. Are you doing it right? OK. OK, so. Securing uh, mobile devices. So uh, updating. So the first thing you need to do is uh, make uh, update your uh, mobile devices. And um, make uh, tracking and enable the tracking in your devices. Then you have to install trusted apps. Privacy options. So whenever uh, whenever you uh, install an application in your uh, device, so first thing you need to make sure you are uh, doing checking the privacy options of it. Uh, like most uh, mostly, we do not uh, read the privacy options or the terms and conditions of that. So uh, kindly read the privacy and terms and conditions of the application also. 
and at the last uh, we have discussed about the thing that you have to make the backups of your trusted data in that so last thing uh, we are going to discuss is like is about passwords so uh, passwords are like toothbrushes uh, they are best when uh, fresh and should not be shared so uh, this misguided reason so if you have a desktop password so you uh, this is the most uh, foolish thing you can do is like uh, entering your uh, password and sticking it on your desktop so everyone can see so try to avoid these sort of things and how to create strong passwords so in this figure you can see uh, you can have you if you have to memorize a, a strong password you can use uh, words you use in your daily life and try to change some words in that that you can memorize them easily so in this way you can create a, sh a strong password uh, by using some uh, regular words you use so uh, that's it from my side if you want to know more about me you can just go to sadasms.com and uh, the thing you have to make sure that you uh, follow all these uh, sequences like social engineering and uh, phishing attacks phone scams and mobile security you must need to do, go through all of this and if you want to connect with me just go to the website and uh, you can have all my social uh, connections in that so that's it from my side and thank you for your time and if you have any questions you can just uh, connect with me and reach me out on my social connections so that's it from my side thank you that was great Saad uh, I hope that you had all enjoyed this session and learned a lot from Saad Aslam uh, as you all know that uh, as this as technology is progressing security is in, security is playing an immense role where uh, we are to strengthen your uh, to strengthen what your software or your uh, technologies that you are using uh, we we see that there are a lot of tech, uh, software breaches happening in this current world and it is really important to protect data uh, in this modern era so i hope that you had enjoyed the session and those who are hoping to pursue their career in cyber security i would recommend to get connected with sadaslam as soon as possible thank you